Hello, and welcome to Let My People Eat, a podcast that provides satisfying talk about kosher nutrition. Here we clear through the clutter of nutrition speak, arm you with the clarity and confidence to eat, feel, and be your healthiest every day. I am Jill Sharfman, a board-certified holistic nutritionist living in Los Angeles. And I'm Dr. Andrea Moskowitz, a neuroscientist and psychiatrist in Los Angeles. I use my training and experience to integrate positive lifestyle changes into my patients' lives. Hey, Andrea. Hey, Jill. How's it going? It's going really well. So this is the start to our new spring season. It's exciting, huh? Yeah. I hope you had a good Pesach. I did. Okay, good. Um, So I have a question for you. As an MD, when you go to visit your doctor, Mm because you you are an MD, right. do you think he treats you differently than he would maybe a layperson? Uh, first of all, uh, she. She. I, I, I don't know if she does or not. You know, it's, it's hard for me to tell, right? right? Because I would imagine that just even like the vocabulary we use in our conversation is different because she doesn't have to explain terms to me. Right. So although a lot of people, once they've become more educated about their own health issues, um, they know all the words anyway. Right. So I think it's variable, but it's, it's, I don't really have somebody to compare myself to. I get it. I get it. (laughs) So so. I think I have a little too much knowledge to make me dangerous (laughs) when I go to my doctors because I will, I will challenge things. I know enough to challenge and ask questions. Right. Um, I might even be labeled as non-compliant sometimes with some of the things that they might mm-hmm. recommend. Um, but um, yeah, there are a lot of people out there who don't have the knowledge and don't know how to advocate for yes. themselves and maybe challenge a doctor or ask the questions so that yes. they should ask. Yeah. Well, ideally, it really shouldn't feel like a challenge. I mean, I have clients, right? right. So I work as the doctor part Correct. too. Yeah. So ideally, you know, I try and I, I over the years, I, I will admit I've become more aware of this, Um, is that it shouldn't, it, it's not, to me, if somebody asks questions, I'm happy. It's not like, it shouldn't feel like a challenge. Mm. Um, And you shouldn't, people shouldn't feel like they have to be on the defensive with their doctors. It can be a back and forth conversation to sort of discuss what are the options, because there's o- almost always, I mean, in an emergency situation, that's a different thing, but there's almost always options and different choices and everything's got its pluses or minuses. There can be a plan. Let's try this first and then we'll go to n- number two, like I've done with with families, like they really didn't want medication. I said, okay, that's fine. Let's, you want to try some herbal stuff first or you know, ever. And I said, and, and then let's revisit this if this doesn't work. Right. So, so, so it it can be that kind of where you're, you're forming a treatment plan together or an evaluation plan together, depending on what you're doing. And I don't know if it should feel sort of like challenging. I mean, you can should be able to ask questions and your physician well, should be happy that you do. I, I think, though, that you might be unusual. And and that's what that's something I want to ask um, yeah. my guest. Okay, um, great. Because she's she's seen quite a few doctors, and I want to know if that's been her experience. So, Eve Ellenhorn is an integrative health practitioner, women's fitness trainer, and culinary nutrition chef. She is the founder of Flavorful Fit. The Flavorful Fit movement is a program for those who want to lose weight, improve their health, and lead a healthier lifestyle using a whole foods approach. Eve enables her clients to experience lifestyle habit changes that eliminate sugar cravings and keep them feeling energized. She has recently extended her program to those out there who simply want to get to the root of their symptoms or simply cannot lose weight. She now practices together with a functional doctor, Keith Berkowitz, to create formulas for clients who are suffering from chronic illness. Hey, Eve. Hey, Eve. Hi. Hi. Welcome to Let My People Eat. So I want to hear about your journey and and what brought you to the point to deliver the Flavorful Fit movement. But before that, um, you heard about Andrea and how she interacts with her patients. Has that been your experience? Well, first, I have to applaud you for, you know, saying, um, you know, how you try to create these conversations with your clients because, Apparently in today's world, it's very hard to, you know, to find someone who's 
really interested in having those conversations and really listening to patients and clients. So I have to just say how um, inspired I am by even hearing that. Thank um, you. But yeah, I mean, doctors, I mean, throughout my whole life, it's been a struggle. I've been through, been through a lot since I, I was a very young age. Um, I almost felt like my, you know, my symptoms were ignored or deemed as low as it's in my head. And um, as I got older, I was diagnosed with um, Hashimoto's and I attempted to, you know, find an endocrinologist that would listen to me and aside, you know, just from giving me medications for it to actually listen to my symptoms because I still did have symptoms after it. Right. So wait, I want to interrupt just for a second. Andrea Hashimoto's one sentence definition it's autoimmune disorder that affects the thyroid right and we spoke about right. this and it has our... multiple symptoms it can be very hard to diagnose um etc right and we spoke about this in our thyroid episode so if anybody right. wants to delve deeper into that topic um but yeah you talked about medication because a lot of doctors do jump automatically to the medication aspect um and it's not surprising because the pharmaceutical industry spends roughly $5 billion annually on marketing, which ends up being around $8,000 per physician. And they also do other things. Wait, what? Yeah, it's that. But I, I think, you know, going back, um, it's, I mean, I have to put this plug in because yeah. I, I, you know, I think there is that perception that doctors are like controlled by far, by big pharma. Mm-hmm. And I think there was issues in the past, but I think it's it's not really that so much as that medical school, there's a lot of information to learn. And a lot of it sometimes they don't, it's not that, I mean, they should teach about medications and antibiotics and all that kind of stuff. Like they do have to learn that information and how things work, et cetera, surgical tech, you know, all that kind of stuff. But they don't, it's, it's problematic that they don't teach certain things, I think, mm-hmm. so that there's not enough teaching about nutrition. There's not right. enough teaching about um, keeping yourself healthy, working with patients and, thing, and things like that. And it, it, you know, everything I've learned, I've learned since medical school. I didn't learn it in medical school and I didn't learn my approach in medical school. Right. So I, I think part of it is that it has to come into the education piece. Right. So, is, right. Know. what And that's exactly what you were saying. And studies yeah. show that 75% of U.S. medical schools curriculum don't include the minimum 25 hours of nutrition education hours that are recommended by the National Academy of Science. So I don't know about you, yeah. Eve, but I've had 700 hours of nutrition <laughs> training in order to become board certified. <laughs> right. So um, we we probably do know more than the average. So Eve, sure. take us back. Tell us Tell us your story. Um, so I, I'm going to talk more about like what you just said, cause I, I, I definitely think it's part of my journey and like what led me into this whole approach. But, um, I, I, I've been given Synthroid, my mom, you know, my mom assumed that I had thyroid issues because she also has Graves disease. Um, and you know, doctor after doctor, I would still, okay, you know, just stay on the Synthroid. Everything will be fine. Um, after my second child, I actually, I gained a lot of weight. I wasn't, I wasn't brought up in a household that really focused a lot on diet and, you know, you know, which ingredients are better for you and things like that. So I think, you know, gaining, gaining that weight led me into that realm of digging deeper into nutrition and looking um, into ingredients and what this ingredient does for you. And that does for you. And, um, I was reading a lot about this doctor, his name is Dr. Chris Kresser, that, you know, speaks a lot about Hashimoto's and thyroid. And one of the first things that I actually did was actually remove gluten and dairy, um, which really made the biggest change for me personally. Um, Same here. Not only, yeah, (laughs) I mean, not only did it help me lose weight, but um, I I was able to get my my medication doses down. Um, And then you know, flash forward six years later, I, I got pregnant and I had, I I miscarried at about five, six months, um, which led me down into another, another situation with how I practice now. But after I lost all that weight, I eventually became, I went to IAN and, which is um, the IAN. Yeah. 
integrative um, of nutrition. And um, then I became a personal trainer because I just, you know, I saw how, how amazing it was that like you can really transform your body like from the inside and out. So that led me into becoming a trainer. Um, and then a few years after that, you know, my father kind of like chimed in. He's like, Oh, where is she going with this? So what, what could uh-huh. she do with this? Uh-huh. So he actually enrolled me into a culinary school in the city that focuses a lot on, you know, vegan plant-based oh. and, um, was actually the founder, uh, her name is Anne Marie Colbin, um, where she focuses a lot on, you know, healing through diet and even treating patients with that, you know, that have cancer with specific protocols and things like that. So it was kind of half, half was a lot of learning about nutrition, but half of the time we also spent hours, you know, uh, learning about nutrition and how to heal and even, um, you know, when somebody does surgery, like, how do you feed them? Is it liquid form? Is it so kind of learning more of that culinary aspect of that? Um, and then, I mean, it keep, keeps continuing every year. I like to go back. I keep like, like, liking to learn more. And then after my miscarriage, I kind of was like, I'm like, I have to figure out what happened. I'm just that type of person that likes to like figure things out up by myself because I've been so accustomed to going to doctors and trying to go the conventional route. And, um, you know, I, I've seen tons of gastrinologists. I've did endoscopies um, back and forth. And they simply couldn't find anything but tell me that, you know, you have an inflamed gut and you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with you. Just take an Nexium or take an Omeprazole and you'll be fine. Right. You said um, at one point you had seen like close to 30 doctors. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they yeah, couldn't. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah. They yeah. couldn't get to the root of your problem. So you yeah. took it and on. My, my, yeah, go you're going to laugh because when I even went back to my pediatrician and I told him, I'm like, you know, what's wrong with me? Like I'm dealing with this stuff since I'm five, six years old. Like, why do I have these issues with my stomach? And he... He's like, uh, you know, take take this book. He actually gave me a book that it's like, it's all in my head. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And, and I was, after that, I was like, gosh, wow. I got to figure things out. Yeah. Have you changed your children's pediatrician since then? <laughs> I'm sorry. I haven't, but um, <laughs> I mean, I try to apply what I know. And I listen, it is, always has to find that balance. And I mm-hmm. respect MDs and doctors from, for when they're needed. Um, in cases of emergency or, you know, if, if any herbal remedy doesn't work and, you know, if I need to use antibiotics at any given moment, I'm still going back and, and, you know, using that when it's needed. Right. Um, so I definitely have that balance between those two. Right. So let's talk again, and we've touched on this before, um, functional medicine. So you're working with a functional medicine doctor and those doctors they they look at you as the whole person instead of sending yeah. you to a lot of specialists who might look at the different the different pieces and and not put everything together so yeah. um you found help with a functional medicine doctor i'm i'm guessing along with everything that you were doing by yourself yeah so i actually enrolled before I actually met him, I enrolled myself into, um, I felt, I felt like there was something missing to what I was doing with clients already. And I know that, you know, a lot of women deal with, you know, having to lose weight and, you know, they even eating a whole foods diet, they also can lose weight sometimes. Right. So that's, I think, I think why I went into IHP because it kind of gave me that, you know, that missing piece that I needed and figuring out, you know, why this person couldn't lose weight. Is there something else that's going on in the body that can connect the dots and why maybe this person can't go to the bathroom properly or, um, you know, how's their liver functioning and things like that. So I, I did that course to kind of put it all together in terms of functional lab testings. Right. And mm-hmm. actually the first functional doctor I met in the city, um, kind of worked backwards with me. And because I already was familiar with the system and how, you know, what needs to be done and figuring things out, I felt like I was, you know, going backwards. 
So I, you know, I left the first one and then, you know, I found Dr. Keith Berkowitz just because he was specialized in Hashimoto's and thyroid. Right. And, Mm -hmm. um, I actually ran labs by myself and took those labs to him. And I ended up finding out that I was dealing with mold toxicity. Right. Uh, Yeah. So that, that's a big deal. I know I have, I know somebody right now who's dealing with that and it's something that's very hard to, to get rid of. And, you know, unless maybe you move homes altogether. Um, yeah. 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 So, um, so let's talk about labs for a minute because there are general labs that an MD might, um, might order for you, but they don't really necessarily tell us the whole picture. So I am sure Andrea knows, I know what to ask for. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because I know you guide people and help them and, and you're able to do that. So when I was going to regular doctors in the beginning, the first one I actually saw that actually diagnosed me, actually, he was a very smart guy. He worked in Well Cornell. He actually passed away. Mm. Um, I originally wanted to go back to him because that, you know, that's where it all started. And, um, all the other endocrinologists didn't test for, you know, for the full thyroid panel. Mm -hmm. Right. It would either be missing antibodies or it would be missing, um, reverse T3 that a lot of people, you know, don't like to run or don't think it's accurate enough. Right. Um, yeah, I, I feel like there's a lot missing to the, to the labs for sure that, you know, people will come and say, Oh, my doctor said everything's fine. And the labs look fine. Meanwhile, this is high, this is low, this is high, this right. is low. And it's, I find it's also like this... besides thyroid, female hormones are generally, um, a full panel of those right. are not run. Yeah. It's also, well, well, with those two, it's tricky because depending, like if somebody is still, um, you know, having periods and everything, then you have to sometimes do them at several points in it's their fine. cycle Correct. and you have yeah. to track that. Mm-hmm. And so it also, you know, I'm not trying to make excuses, but it also right. requires that the, that the client be willing to come in several times for blood draws and sort of work with you right? on it. It's not like a one-off. I mean, the same thing with thyroid, because depending on where you are in, if your antibodies levels are high or if they've dropped and something else has gone up and something else has gone down, you may have to do, run it through several times. I've had myself times with clients where, I mean, I'm not an endocrinologist. I send them off somewhere else to get treated, but I pick it up sometimes and it's sometimes not the first time I run a thyroid panel that I pick it up. Right. Um, Interesting. You know, cause, cause it, there can be certain points where actually everything kind of looks normal, but if they're still having symptoms, you should like run it again. Right. And you know, and, and run and, the correct and, ones, run, run the, the full correct panel. one, run the full panels and things right. like that. Right. And, and what yeah. I've been doing, and I don't know if everybody can do this. I don't know if everybody's insurance allows for That's this, problem too. but I have been going to have my blood work done before I see my doctor for my annual physical. So at least there's something there that we can look at and work on. Otherwise, I feel like if you do it that day, it goes into a black hole. There's Right. Yeah. And then you can work with your doctor Mm -hmm. sometimes on, if you have a working relationship with them, right? Right. Um, On, um, you know, having them send in the requests for that so that you get you know, you go two weeks before, say. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't go the day before. <laughs> yeah. Know, to no. Go like two weeks before and um, get it done. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I've can, been doing that, that. Yeah. now also because yeah. it gives me somebody who I have a little fam- familiarity how to right. read a lab that if there's mm-hmm. something I see that I question, it, I can bring that up sure. also. Mm-hmm. Um, do we want to talk about ranges again really quickly for lab okay. work? Sure. Do you want to, Eve, do you want to jump in? Yeah. Um, I think also the ranges definitely are an issue just because, I mean, they, they, they've said that the percentages are based on a healthy individual and most likely anyone that's that's healthy is really hard to find (laughs) just because chronic illness is, you know, rising. Right. Um, so when we're, I'm sorry, when we're talking about ranges, so when you get your blood work and by the way, always request a copy of your blood work from your doctor, they are legally obligated to send that to you and keep it on file. So you can compare if they don't do it for you year to year, there's always a range that shows what 
as we said, is considered quote unquote, quote unquote healthy. Right. And if you are in that range, you're considered healthy. Now, something that people should be aware of, if, if it's in the healthy range, but it's a little too high or it's a little too low, that's not really good either. You really want to be in the middle. Um, functional medicine, I know, because I just did one of my continuing education uh. classes on this, their range is actually very different than uh, standard blood work. So if you're working with a functional medicine doctor, you might see a difference in the ranges that they consider healthy. Right. So these are all good things for people to know when they go approach their doctor. Right. The ranges yeah. also vary from lab to lab. Yes. Yeah. Depending on the standards. That, yeah. 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 That's true. So, um, so you found by emphasizing healthy eating and uh, physical activity, uh, and those types of things, your lifestyle changes that you were able to, I mean, I'm looking at you now. <laughs> you look, you know, vibrant Great. and healthy. And I know you're still dealing with your mold. I, I don't know what's going on yeah. inside right now. But um, so you found that these things really were worked for you and but you really initiated it. Yeah, and because I'm a food lover and probably mostly like every other girl <laughs> out there likes to go out to eat and enjoy themselves. I took into account that I still had to enjoy those things too, but mm -hmm. I really just swapped out ingredients at home, um, you know, swapping out different cooking oils and different flowers and mm -hmm. still, I was kind of known for that when I actually started my program for recreating everyone's traditional recipe and, you know, just using healthier ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really how it made a lifestyle for me. Um, and I really try to do that with clients as well, getting them to, you know, shift how they cook, shift how they, you know, think about life and, you know, not just always focusing just on the weight loss itself. Right. Yeah. We have, we actually, Angie and I, our tag, one of our taglines is you can have your babka and eat it too. That <laughs> there's a way that you can still enjoy life and enjoy, even though I'm grain free, dairy free, Andrea's a vegan. Basically, basic, kind of vegan vegetarian. Vegan vegetarian. So I have some stuff, but yeah. But, you yeah. know, we yeah. still uh, enjoy our food and, like you said, adapt it so that it works for us. And, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know it, it seems do your clients feel that it's, um, you know, obviously when they come see you, they're at a certain point where they really want to make a change. Do, what do they struggle yeah. with? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the struggle of consistency. And I, I mean, now it's very hard to compare it because of COVID and, you know, everyone's much more stressed out. Um, you know, dealing with much more stuff right now. But I think before COVID, the issue was consistency and obviously the lack of, um, you know, finding what works for them the best because everyone's so used to, you know, going to, let's say, a nutritionist or a dietitian um, and focusing on the food. They're not really focusing on other things like their relationships, how they, um, you know, how they address their anxiety mm -hmm. and their stress. What Sleep. are they doing with their free time? Mm -hmm. How are they going to the supermarket to shop and doing all those other things that I, that I really try, you know, try to get them to do mm -hmm. instead of just telling them what to eat, because sometimes they'll come back and say, uh, I feel so restricted. And I'm like, you don't have to feel restricted if you, if, you know, if you want to, you know, increase something that you feel like you need more of, I want you to pick up on those body signals and really hone in on that and understand, you know, why and where, and, you know, asking all those questions and getting to know them better in a more individualized setting. Um, but I think, I think the lack of consistency, and I think also trying to, um, address their stress and anxiety. I feel like that's mm -hmm. something that holds a lot of people back and like being stuck. Right. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. sometimes they don't want to talk about it. You know, I'm not, I'm not a therapist, you know, I'm sure that you also get, mm -hmm. you know, people who you know, they're afraid. They don't want to talk about the things that are, you know, that make them feel vulnerable or. Right. 
but that right. you kind of need to be a therapist for what you do because yeah. in order yeah. for them to make that change they have to be open right to accepting new yeah. ideas which but that can also take time and it's a process yeah exactly you know, it's, it's not going to happen probably the first it's not session a quick fix. No, oh no yeah that's the other thing we emphasize a lot you know, right. Oh, yeah. Is, is not, you know, d don't come to us if you're like, I need to lose 10 pounds this month before that bar mitzvah or something. Right. Yeah. Like so that. I no, do get clients like that from time to time. Right. And yeah. and I tell them, you know, this isn't like I, that's not what I do. I, uh, right. I can't I can't give you that. <laughs> right. what, what's the number one reason somebody comes to the Flavorful Fit program? Like, is yeah. there something you can point to that and say the number one reason they come to me is? Mostly for thyroids. Mm -hmm. huh. And did they know Just it's thyroid it or do you have to explain to them that it's thyroid? Most of them are already diagnosed. Mm -hmm. And then you know, some of them are, are even either misdiagnosed or undiagnosed. Mm -hmm. Seeing that yes. happening really common right now where, where um, I've actually had like over 10 clients recently who are undiagnosed with Hashimoto's because their doctors were not running antibodies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, okay. And so y your program, what do they learn on your program? They learn how to read nutrition labels. Yeah. So uh, really mostly reading labels, you know, um, checking ingredients while they're shopping. I know a lot of people yeah. focus on numbers and calories and all that. I really focus more on ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the private appointments are really to get to know the person better. I'm not, I don't like to sit down and write menus and recipes because they're already getting that. Mm -hmm. And I try to use more of that time in, you know, getting to know their lifestyle and, um, you know, seeing where they can implement you know, good habits, um, right. they're getting, they're getting right. really, really the private support I think is a necessity. Right. Do you use supplements in your practice with them? Do you, do you ever, do you recommend supplements that people might include? So I'm not, I'm definitely not a supplement person. I don't ever want to ever get into mm -hmm. that realm of, mm -hmm. you know, functional medicine where they're, cause it it could still become one of those things like a band aid if you're right. not using it pro like using mm -hmm. it properly or really getting to the root of the issue. Right. Well, um, Andrea and I always say that supplements are just what that word is. They are a supplement to mm -hmm. eating a whole foods diet, uh, sleeping well, moving your body. It's 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 something that you add on as opposed to the, the panacea Replacing. Yeah. As, as opposed to treating right. yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. So, um, um, so I'm very against that. And so is the doctor that I work with. That's why I, I really loved him um, and respected his work because he wasn't that type of functional doctor because most and a lot of the functional doctors will, you know, get or attract people to come to them and then put them on a, bunch of different supplements mm -hmm. and then you know sometimes that could even backfire right or cause more imbalances in other areas right um yeah but i only use it if it's a necessity right i feel and that, I, that people sorry. feel no it's okay that people feel that natural or safer and they have a fear of medication so that's why they tend to you know try and try supplements Right. First. And, but they really need to be guided. I mean, it's they really. Do. They do. Cause I mean, actually, you know, at the end of the day also, I mean, supplements, although they are regulated by the FDA, they're regulated as food additives, which basically means they're hopefully like not toxic. Um, so they're not going to kill you, but it has nothing to say about how active they are, how effective they are. They interact with gonna, other medications. If they can interact with other things. Well, I mean, that's true. Right. I mean, that's true for anything over the counter, period. It can all, it, and that's true for herbs too. Mm -hmm. Herbs can interact with medications and other things and, you know, all of it. So it is important to have somebody working with you. And, and I always do ask about like herbs. And if I'm not sure, I look it up because there's ways to look up interactions with herbs and supplements and things like that. But it's it's important to whoever you're working with let them know right. all that all of that information, you know. Yeah. 
Um, it's very also very customized also because right. I also get exactly. you know maybe hundreds of DMs on my Instagram of people asking me, oh, is this a good probiotic? Is this a good magnesium? And I'm like, I, you need to know your current state of your of your gut to be able to right. determine that. Right. So I, it, it's not it's not a quick fix. No. No. Right. It it is some something. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, so you mentioned um, for your Hashimoto's that you went, I think, gluten-free and dairy-free? Yeah. Was it dairy? So can you just, I mean, this is not, and and this is not to be um, uh, prescribing for anybody, or but w- what are some of the other um, foods that you found people with Hashimoto's uh, may have uh, kind of allergies to or should consider? Um, well, food, so I've food been types. On a, I've been reading... Um, I read a bunch of different books about it. And also, I also like to listen to people's experience with it. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of people do say that gluten, dairy, um, any processed sugar has literally, you know, changed their life and taking that out and helping them, you know, decrease the inflammation. Right. Okay. So, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard, but I know I personally and you, we've, we really have had good experience with right. changing up our diet. So, right. but yeah, again, talk, work with somebody who, yeah. who, who is very familiar. Um, I, I guess this question's for both of you. Do you think the newer generation of medical students are going to be more open to the lifestyle changes, the diet changes? Do you think there's been a paradigm shift in the way doctors approach things <laughs> you know i would love to oh you, do you want to say something no, okay. no. I, she's like okay you answer that one <laughs> you know i would love to say oh yeah sure i mean part of it too and again i'm not making excuses you know but the pace of increase in knowledge in the medical field is crazy it's actually it's crazy there's so much more being published um, that's why you have all these specialties and part, part of the reason you have specialties and subspecialties and everything, it's impossible to keep up with, you know, with it. Like, okay. I think, I think if your average physician from the fifties came back and saw what's being published now, their brain would explode, but I, you know, look, they'd be like, how are you doing it? You know? So I, I think something's going to have to give soon because it's, it's almost be you know, become like, oh, this person is like, you know, they're the expert in doing like surgeries on the right thumb. No, just joking. But it's become very specialized. Right. You know, and that just makes everything more and more and more complicated. You know, it may be that, you know, this is crazy, but it, there's a whole science like informatics um, in medicine and that, that that may actually be helpful for being able to sort of put information in and get it kind of pulled together with like what's known for like for a client that because you right. it's just become overwhelming for people to, right. to figure things out I, uh, so i think that we're we're sort of in this limbo area right now because i think it's very clear that something's got to be done because nobody's going to be able to keep on top of even a small part of it and and they may be using like um artificial intelligence or computers to help people track all that stuff. But right now there's, I think they're still in the older mode. And honestly, it's just, things just get short shrift yeah. because there's just so much to, to pack into all that time. And so much we don't know. And so still. much we don't know. And I, you know, I think it depends. I mean, one thing I think in the past 10 years or so, there have been more of these just more, you know, it used to be this very sort of straight path to medical school. You know, just like if you were going into law, you did like poli sci or history, and then you went to law school. It's so like you go to medicine, so you do like biology or something like that. But now there's more interesting majors at the undergraduate level. So I think there people are getting a little bit more exposed to things where you can do things like biology and society, or you can do minors in nutrition. You can like kind of add these things. So I think that's where it's coming in. Right. I, you said yeah. you said something I want yeah, to pick up on that. Sure. Patients generally, they go to their doctor, they buy into the mindset that the doctor is going to take care of my health. But 
like you said, the doctors are overwhelmed and the patients become passive recipients rather than active in their own care. Mm. And when generally, like, let's say 100 years ago, when generally the idea was just to keep people alive, it was it was easier. But now with it's chronic, right, with chronic conditions, mm. I think the patients need to take a larger role in managing their health care. Right. And it's just not just going to the doctor and take this and then they leave. They right. need to actually. Yeah, they, need, they definitely need more time sitting with them to even explain to them what they even have. Right. Yeah. Or, or yeah. right. Or just for them to say, hey, the doctor mentioned this. Let me go like you did and investigate and read more about it and and not just sit back and allow right. the care to happen to you, but take an active right. care and advocate and ask for the blood right. test. Right. And if you don't like your doctor and don't think, you know, they're listening to you, find a new doctor, right. which I know is not always easy. Um, yeah, the other, the other thing too, is to ask, you know, if your doctor mentions something, you can ask them like, oh, can you give me like a website for more information? You know, et cetera, because as much as blogs can be helpful, they can also be really unhelpful. Um, so y you have to take them with a grain of salt, which sometimes people don't. And, you know, I, I, when I try when I prescribe medications to be very clear and, and go over all the side effects and, you know, but people will come in like, oh, I read that this could do. And I'm like, well, that's like an extremely rare thing to have happen. I'm sorry it happened to that person, but, you know, that's not. Right. What what like a common experience is. And of course, I'm going to be monitoring and everything and we'll right. figure it out. Uh, but I do try to give people some websites that I think present a balanced picture. Don't just talk about medication, talk about other interventions, but that I know are well validated. Well, you know, that they're well researched. Yeah. Et cetera. Right. We don't want to always ask Dr. Google for... <laughs> No, and, and realize too, when you do your Google searches, I mean, you can do Google for scholarly articles, actually, which is somewhat more helpful. Um, but also too, you know, your your top Google hits are going to be what the ads. Right. Yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, everyone can find Eve. She's at flavorful underscore fit on Instagram. She's also at flavorfulfit.com. Mm -hmm. um, and she was kind enough to put together a PDF of what blood work um, you can you. request from your doctor. So um, I'm going to put that on the website and you could go ahead and print that out. Next time you have your annual visit, you can go to your doctor, you can talk to them. Right. You may not need all the tests that are there, but you know it, it's something at least to open the conversation to show them that you want to be more involved as a patient. Right. Um, so Eve, any last minute thoughts that you would like to leave our audience with? Um, probably, I mean, I like what you just said about like the blogs because I do also find that um, people will get too many opinions from too many different places and um, it, it just plays with your mind too much and it, it opens doors in different directions and it's just going to stress you out more. So, right. you know, for anyone who's out there that's looking to educate themselves, even if you do decide to go down that path to learn more, um, don't put in too much and really just take it like a grain of salt, like you said. Right. Um, and yeah. Eve is very, I know I gave her Instagram handle before at Flavorful Fit, but she's very active on Instagram. I'm watching her journey with the mold toxicity, which is very interesting. Uh -huh. But you give a lot of good information on there right. and you're very open. So I would highly recommend that people um, follow her there. You can also follow me on Instagram at Jill H. Scharfman. I would like to thank our engineer, Mike Cassantini at the Network Studios. You can also find us on Schmoozy, a new social media app where you can listen to full episodes of our podcast, as well as join our forums for a deeper dive into our episode topics. Um, so I'm going to open up a forum on Schmoozy for okay. this episode. So if anybody wants to um, ask us more questions, you can join us there. Eve, thank you so much thank for your you so time much, today. Eve. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I thank really you. appreciate nice it. Nice meeting both of you. <laughs> nice meeting you too. Bye. 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 And that is it for this episode of Let My People Eat. Please visit our website at letmypeopleeat.com and leave us a comment. Get in touch with our email at podcast at letmypeopleeat.com or call us at 317-659-0004. 
We are also on Facebook. Search for Let My People Eat podcast to join the discussion. You can ask questions and suggest topics you'd like us to talk about in future episodes. If you like this show, please make sure to leave us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and tell your friends and family to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. Let My People Eat is proud to be part of Jewish Coffee House, where you can find your fill of stimulating podcasts dedicated exclusively to Jewish content. Please remember that while we are certified professionals, this is not a medical advice podcast. No content, posts, or comments should be interpreted as professional guidance. Always speak to your own doctor about making the right life changes for you. Until next time, I am Jill Sharpman. And I am Andrea Moskowitz. Thanks for joining us and go in good health.